The remains of the U.S. astronauts that have been located to date will be flown today from Barksdale Air Force Base in Louisiana to the mortuary at Dover Air Force Base in Delaware. Meantime, I can tell you the search for wreckage is making progress. A lot has been found now. The nose cone has been dug out of the hole it created and has been packed up to be sent to investigators looking for clues to what went wrong. And more key parts have been located, says searcher Greg Coors in Hemphill, Texas. A piece of a landing gear. Uh, there was no wheel or tire. We found a small piece of fuselage. Elsewhere, a tire was found, damaged, but in one piece. This, as dramatic 911 calls from Saturday, are released in southeast Texas. We just saw something very strange in the sky, almost directly above Nacogdoches. Uh, almost looks like a plane uh, might have blown up. Our house just shook real bad. It sounds like there was an explosion somewhere. Yes, ma'am. The Challenger was coming in this morning, and it blew up. It always comes right in over our driveway out here off the 343. Yes, ma'am. And it blew up. Well, not the Challenger, but Columbia this time, though every bit is catastrophic. Now, investigators are most interested in what happened early in the shuttle's breakup. This home video of the accident, taken hundreds of miles west of where most of the wreckage has been found. That is cool. A family that had gone out to watch Columbia from a hilltop outside of Phoenix, Arizona. Look at the chunks coming off of it. Yeah. What the heck is that? So you notice on that video how the main body of the shuttle continues on and whatever's come off stays behind and it's going to float down, which means it's very light. So it could be a lot of tiles coming off and what they call the zipper effect, or it could be something else. NASA's sending some teams now to check reports of wreckage that are coming in, uh, found on the ground from as far west as Arizona and California. So they're intensely interested in that. There were some reports that might be pieces of wing, uh, but a lot of these reports turn out to be false. So we'll see how that comes out. Sam? Robert Hager reporting live at Johnson Space Center for us in Texas. Thank you very much, Bob, for that. That is the story of the day from Texas, the other big story of the day in New York City, the United Nations building. A big meeting is expected there in about 40 Because of religious considerations, and of course NASA is very scrupulously observing all the requirements that go along with those religious concerns. The remains of Colonel Roman will be transported to Israel following examination at Dover Air Force Base. Now as to the investigation today, there is much attention being given to the computers at White Sands, New Mexico. In those computers is 32 seconds of data, which was not observed by the people here in Mission Control at the Johnson Space Center. That 32 seconds carries on from the point where the telemetry from the shuttle Columbia stopped as the aircraft was breaking up. Also today, much attention being given to the nose section of Columbia, which contains avionics in which further data may be stored which could give investigators clues to why the spacecraft broke up. A response this morning to concerns about a study which NASA commissioned in 1990 saying that there was particular vulnerability to the tiles in the wheel well section of the orbiter that could lead to catastrophic failure. Did NASA pay enough attention to that study? The response to that this morning was that NASA, NASA commissions and pays attention to a great many studies, and this was one of them. Christy? Thank you. Dan Molina reporting to us from Johnson Space Center. Another mega ship has been forced into port by a Norwalk-like right, virus. Reserve my time. Jim reserves the balance in that news conference. They are expected to talk about the recovery of remains, as well as new searches now centering in California. We'll bring it to you again once they get started. But before we uh, get to them, let's uh, get a briefing now of our own from the uh, Kennedy Space Center at Cape Canaveral, Florida. NBC News correspondent Jay Barbary joins us for the very latest. Jay, what's going on in California that's of such interest? Well, uh, as you know, Lester, they are beginning to find uh, materials in California and also, I'm told, in Arizona. However, the couple of places they've been to, I'm also told, have been wild goose chases. They turned out not to be debris from the shuttle uh, Columbia. If they do find significant debris out there, that would be very significant because it appears that the Columbia could have started uh, coming apart as soon as it hit the upper atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean. Now, as soon as it began the heating up, uh, then the tiles apparently started coming off. We have some uh, video here I believe we're looking at uh, from uh, Phoenix, Arizona, 
where they show a piece that is the shuttle going through the heat that looks normal at this time here but if you look closely if it's the video I'm thinking about you will see quite a chunk of the shuttle come off from the rear uh, I expect to see it here any time now I don't know if this is the video I haven't seen it yet it's fading away apparently not or we passed it before I uh, I saw it when it came across but there was a huge chunk of shuttle that came off over Phoenix, Arizona. Now what this indicates to investigators, Lester, is here we come back again and there it is. We can see the uh, piece leaving behind the shuttle and this is it. Uh, what this indicates is that from the get-go, the shuttle was coming apart and as it hit the peak loads, stress loads, and the peak heating of 3,000 degrees over central Texas, there it broke apart. Now, they're assuming that what happened is that a piece of uh, covering from the ex external fuel tank here during liftoff, about 80 seconds after liftoff, came off that section of foam. And we refer to it as foam, but really it's a very heavy piece of material. And it did damage on what they call the critical tiles. Now, the critical tiles are near the uh, gear wells and near the wings beneath about 15 percent of those tiles actually are the ones that would cause 85 percent of most of the uh, damage and we just saw what from animation there what they thought happened it created a 30 by 7 uh, long gash into the tiles there it destroyed one tile altogether they believe and uh, partly destroyed the rest of them in that 30 inch long uh, path beneath the belly of the uh, shuttle. We're seeing it again here as I'm watching it coming in. So the belief is right now what happened, of course, when they started back in the atmosphere, because that had taken place, that the tiles began to come off. And if you get one row of tiles coming off, it has what is called the zipper effect. They'll just keep coming off, and pretty soon you lose so many that they ca it cannot withstand this uh, heat and it actually will come apart. So they're looking at this possibility. If they find that they did have tiles off and materials off and wing parts off as early as California, that's very significant and that's what they've been looking for. So perhaps, Lester, in this upcoming briefing, we will get a little more details from uh, Ron Denimore, the program manager for the shuttle program. All right, Jay Barbary out in Florida. Let's uh, move out to the Johnson Space Center in Houston where that press conference should begin shortly. And we're joined by NBC News correspondent uh, Dan Molina with a bit more. Dan, will we learn more about that 32 seconds of data that they were hoping to, to upload or download? Well, you know, we don't know, Lester, at this point. We're going to go in there and certainly ask them about it. They had said this morning that they're, they're very actively looking into that computer data, which, as you say, is located in White Sands, New Mexico. What it is is 32 seconds of information that did not show up on the computer screens of flight controllers over in Mission Control. And the reason that it did not was because those computers in Mission Control are programmed so that if data is corrupted to any substantial degree, say it's 20 or 30 percent corrupted, not completely clear, the computer screens are programmed not to show the data. And so although the data exists deep in the computer system at White Sands, New Mexico, from which it is transmitted here to Mission Control, although it exists, it did not show up and they're very much interested in finding that because it, is, because it is the 32 seconds which follows the end of the telemetry readings that were coming down from Columbia when the shuttle broke apart. Very, very strong interest in that. Uh, earlier today, out at Dover Air Force Base in Delaware, a sad occasion, the flag-draped bodies of, of the remains of the seven astronauts were brought to Dover Air Force Base, and there they will undergo more pathological examination. Uh, special consideration, of course, was uh, given to uh, the body or the remains of Air Force uh, of Israeli Colonel uh, Elon Ramon of the Israeli Air Force uh, because of religious considerations. NASA, of course, is very scrupulously adhering to the provisions of those religious considerations. After examination at the Dover lab, his remains will be then transported to back home to Israel, again, observing the religious considerations. So we have this news conference coming up here. We will be talking about the 32 seconds of missing uh, 
telemetry information from Columbia. We will be talking about the search. We will be talking about photographs, which appear to show things that are as yet unexplained. Uh, it's a great deal of information, Lester, coming up, which we'll report to you as soon as we get it. All right, Dan Molina, thanks very much from the uh, Johnson Space Center in Houston.